we didn't do DVR. So, shoulder surgery. Okay. I'll be getting that. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to see you. For the record, I'm Ann Rice. I'm the Deputy Attorney General. I'm appearing in opposition to this bill. Um, we completely support the policy of government transparency and accountability, which is clearly the basis of this bill. Um, however, I think that the language of the bill itself is very expansive and really creates some problems. So I'd like to go over some of those with you. Um, there is no question that the Glick decision, which you've heard reference to earlier, allows for the, public, the recording of public servants in public areas. But that right to record is not unlimited. Um, <coughs> the Glick decision made clear that it could not interfere with the police officer's duties. Uh, it couldn't, um, and it can only be done in public places where the public has an unlimited right of access which in that case was the Boston Garden, the Boston Commons, excuse me. Since Glick, um, I think that you're aware, our office issued a law enforcement memo to all police departments in the state um, informing them of the Glick decision and the fact that public the recording is allowed. To my knowledge, there have not been problems since that time. Um, I know that there was a problem certainly in where early on. I am fully aware that the, uh, the new chief is, is well aware of that policy now. So I think that we've addressed that. Um, but House Bill 1546 does not contain any limitations in terms of this right to record. It doesn't say anything about where the recording can take place, whether in a public area or a restricted <coughs> area. It doesn't say that the recording can't interfere with a public servant's job. Um, the right to record is not limited to conversation to which one is a party. Uh, it would allow recording of interactions between a public servant and a third party, even if the recorder wasn't involved in that conversation. Section 1 of the bill amends the definition of the criminal offense to say, um, to eliminate it being an offense to record if you are a party to it, or, or one person, one party consents the conversation. But that's different than Section 2, which says it is not unlawful under this bill to um, record a public official. It has no limitations. So the, the testimony that you heard earlier, or the, the questions, is presupposed that it has to be someone who is involved in the actual conversation with a public servant. This bill doesn't say that. So if, if that's the understanding, and if that's the desire, this bill doesn't do that. And I think that's very important. Um, it does not define public servant in any way. There is one different uh, definition in the statutes in the criminal code uh, under RSA 640 2, which defines a public servant as any officer or employee of the state or pub political subdivision thereof, including judges, legislators, consultants, jurors, and persons otherwise performing a gov governmental function. I'm assuming that the intent is to probably be that broad, although I have real concerns about saying that jurors, acting as jurors, are public servants that can be recorded. Um, they should not, no recording should be allowed in a deliberative session. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the language of the statute is very broad in that sense. There is no requirement that people be told that they're being recorded. And I really have to question why it's not. Is the intent of the bill to trick people? Or is this the intent of the bill is to be able to make sure that people are um, behaving as you would expect a government uh, a public servant to? I think it's only fair that someone be told that they're being recorded. And I, there's nothing in here that suggests that. Um, the bill would create conflicts with the enforcement of the right to know law and certain confidentiality laws. As I said, the way that it is written now, it is an absolute right to record a public servant. It doesn't say you can't record when there's confidential information being disclosed. It doesn't say you can't record in non-public sessions of a select board or something like that. So those are all concerns that this bill would, would uh, raise. It does, not, um, it does not define where recording can take place, nor does it allow for imposition of any restrictions. 
public servants work in all sorts of places. Um, in my office, we have a public area where people come in. That's clearly a public area. We have a reception um, area where people are allowed after they get through a secure door. And then we have a secure back area of the building. Are the right, it does the right to record uh, include all of those areas? This bill would suggest that it does. And I think that that's very concerning. Uh, one of the things that I think about oftentimes is a, a district court office of, of a, um, the Division of Welfare, where people may have to go in and have discussions with caseworkers and things like that. I don't know in every situation how those offices are um, structured, whether there is an ability to have a confidential conversation with someone that's not um, in, the, in a public area. I hope there is. But I think that we need to consider that this bill is not just public hearings like this or the clerk at the DMV desk, but it would include any time that a public servant is functioning in their official function. And I think that there needs to be some definition to when and where that can take place. Um, although the bill is intended to create open and transparent government, I really do have some concerns that it may have the opposite effect. I think in New Hampshire, and we've just seen this with, with the, the primaries, is government officials here are very accessible to the public. Um, and I, I think that that is one of the great joys of being in New Hampshire. But the prospect of being audio recorded is intimidating to a lot of people. And it can be particularly intimidating if you don't know if you're being recorded or not. So I think that it may cause some public officials to become reluctant to engage with the public, um, even in routine encounters. Much of our government is made up of volunteers, people who volunteer their services to the government. All of our, you know, our licensing boards, those are all volunteers. And I have a great concern about being able to recruit people when we're imposing these kinds of um, laws. I am not saying that a license, licensing hearing is not a public uh, hearing that can be recorded. Absolutely it is, but this goes far beyond that. So for all of those reasons, I would urge you not to pass this bill in its current form. We, we would be happy to work with the committee if there was a subcommittee formed on this, but I think the way that it is now, it's extremely broad. I'm happy to take any questions. So before we get into that, Representative Burt is, is going to be working on an amendment. A couple of folks here have indicated a desire to work with him. So Representative Burt will be the contact person? He will be the chair, subcommittee chair? I, I guess he is. <laughs> right now he's a single person on that, but uh, I'm sure we can get a couple of folks to help him out. Hopefully I can get some friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. My concern was um, very specific, like if you had mentioned it there last semester. We just believe that there would be a lot more unintended consequences of tripping people up who are public servants or volunteers, and they're not, you know, the role of a public servant versus a private citizen can change in an, in an instant if you're in a public space. I, I think that that's, I, yes, I would believe that. I think that the lack of definition of a public servant is one of the critical things. And the fact that the people aren't being told that they're being, <coughs> I, I do think that it, it can put people up in a way that could make it very uncomfortable. Follow up? Yes. Would you believe that this is almost like trying to tag to find fault with the public servants? That's how I'm perceiving it. And uh, would discourage a lot more of citizens to participate in a voluntary uh, and our uh, state runs on volunteer public servants. Yes, I, I would believe that and I would agree with it. Thank you. We're on Picking the other side, if I'm talking to you, I hear you. My brain records what you said. But if I tell somebody else and you say, that didn't happen, 
it's my word against yours. Uh, it, the only reason that I can believe I would be afraid of being recorded, or you being afraid to record, be recorded, is if one of us said something that was wrong. Oh, I, I don't think that that's the only reason that someone would be afraid. I think being recorded can be very intimidating. I am used to it now, but I can tell you 10 years ago, it was not a comfortable thing for me to have to come into this room and know that I was going to be recorded. You get used to it. But for, for many of our government employees, being recorded is not something that happens all the time. And it's, it's intimidating. Okay, I don't understand it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Um, I'm trying to think how to say this. Um, Project Veritas, if I say that word right, James O'Keefe people, mm -hmm. for years we've had voter fraud in New Hampshire. The New Hampshire AG's office has said no, it doesn't exist. Uh, but now you're going to investigate because of these tapes. Do you feel that these tapes, that these people did not know they were being videotaped, do you think they're useful today? Because now you're looking into this. Are they useful today in terms of, of voter fraud? Um, well, now that the New Hampshire AG, if I may, Mr. Chair, that now that New Hampshire AG's office, if I read the papers correctly in the news, is going to investigate voter fraud that has been happening in New Hampshire for years, now you're going to take a stand that you're going to look at it. And I think you're looking at it because of these tapes. Well, I, I'm not going to comment on ongoing investigations, but I think you may be reading that a little, little <coughs> incorrectly. Um, I think that uh, if there is voter fraud going on in terms of people giving false information to uh, election officials, I think that's a very important thing to learn about. Okay, now follow up. Follow up. And in these videos, the elected officials were given a spin on how to um, beat the system, say, okay, if you don't live here, just say you live here. You know, isn't that useful to know that these elected officials in Portsmouth and um, Hanover are doing this? Um, I think that that is important information. I'm not sure that the, the necessarily the way it was done is, is appropriate or fair. And, and that's as far as I want to go because it is an ongoing thing. Okay. I understand what you're saying. All right, and just one last follow-up. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, how do you feel on all the volunteers in 38 states, D.C., that allow one-party consent? Um, how do I feel about all the volunteers? I'm not sure, <coughs> well, I'm not sure what um, you mean. You know, they have all, you know, I'm from Vermont. Mm -hmm. And we're set up almost the same, except for they get paid a little bit more to be a state rep than I do. <laughs> Everybody does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but they're basically volunteer legislators, too. But they have one party consent over there, as well as 38 to 7 other states in D.C. So, I mean, if it happens in 38 states in D.C. and it works okay, why not New Hampshire? I don't know that it works okay, but the big concern that I have had, and I think I hope that I've expressed this, is this isn't just one party consent to someone that's involved in a conversation. Because you're a public official and you are talking to a constituent, this would allow a third person to walk right up and tape record, regardless of whether either of you consents. Why is that fair to the constituent? Good question. I, I think it is. Because the elected... Because the elected Sorry. official is being videotaped, it, you know, I, I just feel any time is, is, is appropriate. I, I, but I, I appreciate I, your stance. I, I think I, we have fundamentally... I guess I would have that. to check on the 38 other states on if they allow that third party to sneak in. Okay. Thank, you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your testimony. Yeah, I, I guess my question goes beyond the recording. You know, if I do something, say something stupid, well, that's on me. And somebody catches it. That's, uh, you know, quick for them. But it's what happens to these recordings and pictures uh, after the fact. A little bit of malicious editing, and I can, you can make the reading of the Gettysburg address sound uh, evil. What, what are 
the protections for uh, a public official who's been taped and uh, then his comments have been edited uh, and put out there uh, maliciously. I, I think that that's a concern with all of the, the access to recording now. I think that's a great concern. Um, and I don't think it's just for this bill, but we see it all the time with kids and things that are being recorded with kids, and that gets posted on the internet in an internet in an edited fashion. So I appreciate the question. I do think it's a concern. I don't think it's limited to just this bill. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Now we've got eight minutes before the next hearing starts.